Hello, welcome to Gagrul.net. This is Gagrul live on Facebook. My name is Wally Sarkisian, and we are today with Harut Sasunian. Harut Sasunian is a well-known journalist. Everybody know him. He's been helping Armenian for ages. Harut, welcome. Thank you, Wally. Um, lately, we're Armenians, and as always, not only fighting inside and the border, but now that spread to around the world. What is your thought on that? Well, it's uh, it's sad, but it's understandable to a degree because uh, it's a very emotional uh, issue, and uh, Armenians, of course, feel very strongly about Artsakh or Nagorno-Karabakh being our historic homeland part of our historic homeland. And the Azeris, uh, there's something that most people don't know, what's going on with the Azeri protesters or demonstrators. M most of them are uh, students who are in, uh, sent overseas from Azerbaijan by government funding. Government gives them scholarship. And uh, so they're, they're, they're in LA and San Francisco and uh, Moscow and Paris, London. They're on scholarship, so when the embassy or the consulate of Azerbaijan needs protesters, they call them, they say, you have to come to the consulate and stand in front with the flag. And these poor uh, students, uh, they have to do this because if they don't, their scholarship will not be renewed. So there are not that many Azeris in Los Angeles, for example, but there are a few who are here on scholarship as students. So they're the ones who are holding the flag and standing there. And I'm sure if they were not here on scholarship, they were just living here, they wouldn't even show up. Do you think Armenian could sue the Azerbaijani consulate for doing this stuff? Especially in yeah. San what they did in San Francisco, because that's hate crime. crime. Yeah, well, the, the lawsuit, you know, in, in order to sue, you need to have evidence uh, not only by the perpetrators of the crime, the hate crime, but also you have to find and prove the link between the perpetrators and the Azeri consulate. And, and if you find the consulate is directing them, you can prove it in court, of course you can sue them. Well, I, I'm sure that San Francisco one, they might have, uh, sorry, I'm just too much Phone's coming in here, just trying to turn it off. Um, in San Francisco, obviously, that's Azerbaijani work. I mean, they came and do, did that stuff. So they have some, some cameras and stuff in there. They could investigate and find and expose them because just suing them, not, we need, they need to be exposed so that people will see them, you know. So anyway, that's... That's uh, another investigative stuff. I'm sure Armenian taking care of that stuff. Um, Russia. Armenia is the only country Russia has military base. And now they're setting up in, uh, in uh, Syria, but you never know how Syria is going to turn out. Um, if tomorrow Turkey attacked Armenia, will Russia do something? Well, <clears throat> I have a two-part two answer. First, uh, I, I don't believe that Turkey will attack Armenia. Uh, Erdogan is, every day is giving very bombastic speeches, and I, I would say it's a lot of hot air, except uh, some weapons that he's transferring to Azerbaijan for the fight. But in terms of uh, we will do this, we'll do that to Armenia, we, we, Armenia will pay a price, all these things, it's just a lot of hot air. I don't take it seriously, and Armenians uh, should not. But of course, we should always be prepared for any eventuality. And the second part of the answer is that Armenia has, a, as you said, a military treaty. Uh, it's called CSTO, and the military tre treaty uh, uh, requires that uh, if Armenia is attacked, then Russia has to come to the defense of Armenia. And and, and Turkey knows this well. So uh, Turkey is not about to have a confrontation with the, with the Russian military. 
because Turkey will end up on the losing side. The uh, uh, so Armenia is safe from that. Uh, they they are not uh, uh, should be too worried because uh, we're we're protected and. Uh, Russia will, uh, as a base, uh, as a treaty, uh, so far the treaty has not come to implementation in terms of action, like this last recent fighting. But if there's an attack by Turkey directly on Armenia, uh, the, uh, you know, if it's a small uh, border skirmish, that's, that's not a war. No, but if no. there was really a war and attack on Armenia, then Russia will have an uh, obligation as per uh, treaty requirements. Right. So, I mean, I don't want to even talk with because I, I know the answer, but Russia is in war with, uh, indirectly with, with the Turk in Syria. They are almost in, in uh, Libya, uh, many other places, yet Russia keeps selling them those uh, advanced equipment, stuff like that. I mean, I just don't understand this Russian and Turkish politics. Well, yes, it is a little complicated, but we need to understand certain facts. Uh, Russia's purpose with Turkey, independently of Armenia, in general with Turkey, is to separate Turkey from NATO, to turn it away from the West towards Russia. So, so that's, that's the key objective of Russia. That's why Russia is giving such importance to Turkey in order to win Tur the Turks over. So that's, that's one thing. Secondly, uh, in Syria, after being on opposite sides for several years, they sat down and found a compromise where they do a joint uh, uh, supervision of the, of the, uh, of the uh, conflict zone in northern Syria. So they found a way of working together, even though it's a very uneasy uh, partnership uh, because there are some attacks, sometimes on the Russian soldiers, sometimes on the Turkish soldiers, and sometimes the Russian jets bomb the, uh, the rebels or the, the yeah. uh, Islamic terrorists, and sometimes Turkish soldiers get killed during the bombing. So from time to time, it... Uh, pushes the limits of this partnership. Uh, in Libya, it's, it's more of a clear-cut situation where Russia is supporting the, the rebels in, in Libya, the General Haftar's group, who are not part of the uh, government in Tripoli. And then uh, Turks are arming and supporting the government of Libya, which is only in Tripoli which is a small part of the whole Libyan territory. The opposition has most of the Libyan territory. So there, the Russians and the Turks can come in direct uh, conflict. And uh, every day that passes, the uh, conflict becomes worse and worse. And recently, the Egyptian parliament uh, approved for the Egyptian military to go into Libya and fight against the Turks on the side of Russians. Joining Egypt and Russia is UAE, United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And uh, That would be great if that happened. <laughs> that would be the yeah. best things. Yeah, so, so uh, Turkey is also sending in jihadists or, or terrorists from Syria to Libya to fight, to fight uh, uh, with, with the Turkish military. Uh, which is something the Turks do in different places. They, that's their, they, yeah, they that's don't want to the, sacrifice their soldiers. They sacrifice others yeah. who stupidly, they get paid a few dollars and they join in, in in the fight and lose their lives. And a lot of them have been killed in, in Syria like that over the years. So, uh, so that's one part about uh, Tur uh, Turkey and Russia in Libya and Syria. When it comes to Armenia, on one hand, Armenia is a strategic ally with Russia, uh, two fellow Christian Orthodox nations, Russian Orthodox and Armenian Orthodox, who've had a centuries of uh, friendship, sometimes uh, antagonistic, sometimes uh, friendly. Uh, 
long before the Soviet Union and Soviet republics, the Tsarist uh, Russia, the Russian Empire. But uh, so you, you would expect that Russia, if you look at it simply superficially, Russia would be siding with Armenia against Turkey or against Azerbaijan. However, let's not forget that uh, friendship and liking people it does not really count in international politics. Yes. What what counts is your national interest. Yeah. And Russia's national interest is to win over Turkey, win over Azerbaijan, and uh, and and also because Armenia is Russian ally. So Russia, for for years now, has tried to play a neutral role, trying to appease both sides, like they sell billions of dollars of sophisticated weapons to Azerbaijan. They also sell some weapons. Armenia does not have that, that kind of money that the petrodollars that Azerbaijan has. But Armenia also gets some discounted or free uh, weapons from, from Russia. So R Russians send weapons to both sides. They uh, get much needed income because there are a lot of US sanctions against them. Their economy is in bad shape. So that's important for Russia. Uh, and also, the uh, Azerbaijan, being an Islamic country, Russia tries to get along with Islamic, mm -hmm. uh, not only other Islamic states, but millions of Muslims who live in Russia itself from the Soviet era. Yeah. So, uh, so Russia does not rush in and take Armenian side every time there's a battle or a conflict. They sort of stay in the minimum, they try to mediate. And the only positive role they play, uh, because Armenians never want a conflict on the border, uh, Armenians want peace. So every time there's a conflict that flare up, the Russians step in and tell both sides, okay, quiet down, yeah. uh, the, 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 stop the fighting, uh, cease fire. So that's what they did in 2016. The Russians are the ones who stopped the Azeri attacks. And that's what's happening now. The last few days, there's been relative tranquility, uh, peace uh, on the border of Tavush between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And that's mostly the work of uh, Russia, because both Azerbaijan and Armenia realize that Russia is the big power uh, in the region. And uh, so they listen to Russia, because Russia has the means to go further into uh, more serious action. So so that's the benefit of Russia uh, to Armenia. Of course, you know, it also helps Azerbaijan. Um, you know, Russia, it just amazed me how their GDP, it's like about one, one and a half trillion. I mean, it's half a California budget. And but yet they have all this military they support and powerful country, super, uh, you know, like, it's just, it, I just don't know how they manage these things. I mean, I, I I give them a credit, you know, like, they have a small budget. I mean, United States is like $20 trillion economy. And, uh, but they could stand up to US and everybody else. Well, yeah, that's a interesting observation. The reason is that uh, Russia and many others, like <laughs> an even better example is North Korea, which has a population that's starving. They're looking for a piece of bread to stay alive. And yet they spend billions in their nuclear program because Russia, North Korea and others realize that if they have sophisticated weapons, they're protected from any kind of attack and invasion. So they spend more money on weapons than on anything else which of course hurts the people in their country, but they're more interested in the power game. In, in Russia still thinks of itself as a superpower that can rival the United States. In fact, because of that mentality which existed during the Soviet Union and uh, all the nuclear weapons that the Soviets had, the uh, Soviets put a lot of their money into the military. That's why eventually they, they self-destructed self-destructed, went bankrupt, yeah. and they just couldn't take it anymore. And it just, whole, whole thing fell apart. Yeah. All right. So that was, that was uh, about Russia's point. Now, Armenia, like, you know, um, 
uh, the, as you mentioned a few minutes ago, Turkey constantly threatening Armenia and Azerbaijan says we're going to have tea in Yerevan. Uh, but yet Armenians, they just talk peace. They don't uh, sort of say something except the last time in Armenia, the defense minister said, uh, if you start war, you lose uh, more uh, land, you. you know, or territory. But other than that, I don't see Pashinian sort of, I, I mean, I don't want to threaten them, but somehow um, speak a little bit hard, you know, and uh, instead of yeah. just saying we want peace and this and that, but I don't know, they're trying to uh, be, uh, because they, they already, Armenia has Garabakh, so they don't need to make more noises, but I just don't know. I want your, your take on that. Yeah, well, this is a very important issue you're bringing it up. Armenians uh, still think, which I don't agree with, they think that if you're the nice guy, then the rest of the world will side with you. Yeah. They, they don't seem to understand. And it, it's not an issue with Pashinyan. This is an issue with all, uh, yeah, all the, the previous, yeah. the presidents, all the previous leaders. So it's not an issue of Pashinyan versus others. Yeah, they yeah. they're all have the same mentality that if, if you play nice, then people will be on your side. They don't seem to understand that international politics, the only thing that counts is power. Uh, Erdogan every day says the most obnoxious, most impolite, rude threats he makes to everybody. He threatened the United States. Uh, he threatened even Putin a few months ago, saying millions of Muslims in Russia will de destroy Russia. And this is during their alliance. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Erdogan knows the, the name of the game is talk big and have a major military and, and throw your power around. The, don't try to be a nice guy. Don't try to get other people to like you. This is not a beauty contest. This is a very ugly game yeah. of power politics. So you have to really uh, be strong and say very harsh things. And uh, so because the world respects power, they don't respect uh, nice niceties. Totally agree and with you. As they say, you know, nice people, nice guys come last. So uh, uh, there's a very good example that happened a few days ago when the spokesman for the Azeri Defense Ministry threatened to bomb with missiles the nuclear Mezamor nuclear yeah. power plant. Armenians, again, reverting back to their Mr. Nice Guy approach <laughs> yeah. in every situation, they immediately announced that, oh, uh, this is terrible. This is terrorism. I get uh, no. I guess uh, humanity and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and 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 then they added. This is where they went wrong, in my opinion. They added saying that uh, Armenia will never attack civilians. We will never attack the dam that has a reservoir that has uh, billions of uh, cubic feet of water. That if if Armenia were attacked the reservoir, half of Azerbaijan will be under the water and and close to a million Azeris will drown in the water. Uh, so Armenian officials announced that, no, 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 we, we are not like that. We're not like the Azeris. Yeah. We're not uh, brutal, barbarian. We're very nice. We will never attack a civilian village. Uh, the Azeris have put their uh, cannons uh, uh, close to the houses in the villages, so we, we won't attack them. Now, the one of the important requirements of international politics is that the more you are unpredictable, the more the enemy doesn't know how to behave with you. The more they can predict your behavior of what you're going to do next, the more they're ahead of you. So you, you, you cannot announce in advance what you will do and what you will not do. You know, uh, you know, I, I totally agree with you. I, uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about Armenian uh, in exile force. Um, there were, I mean, here's, I just put here so you could see it. There was about 173,000 people viewed, 270 shared, 2,100, they uh, 
liked it or love it. We need, I, I, we'll talk about that some other time. I don't want to talk about uh, that. But I just don't know, like Armenian, they just uh, like to see somebody saying something or they, they will put their money where their mouth is. Like because I was saying, if I, because I don't know really how many Armenians are in, in this world. Uh, some people say 8 million, 10 million. But I was doing calculation, 5 million. If every Armenian give $10 a month, that's $50 million. You know, we could do lots of things with it. You know, but that, anyway, that's a different subject. But our, uh, I was just talking in that video about the Kurds. How those guys, for 40 years, all they did is they killed policemen and soldiers. They never attacked any Turkish economic centers, you know, and they just killed the policemen. Well, if you kill policemen, you're not going to get sympathy of that country. They, you, in fact, give Erdogan more power. They never blow up a pipeline. They never. So Armenians should start thinking when Azerbaijan do this kind of things, they immediately attack economic target, you know. But they, they somehow they just tit for tat, you know, they do it. And they have to, you know, like Armenia, again, I'm repeating, uh, it's my video, all I talk. We did everything Armenia ourselves. You know, we went in there, Armenia, and put the task, find out those criminal, Talat, Pasha, Anwar Pasha, they eliminate them. Our youngs, they blow up embassies, that's where the world today recognizes Armenia, and the Turks know Armenia. Garabal, we did ourselves, you know. So we need to go to the other step, yeah, building some military outside Armenia. That was my, my thing was. So Armenia still has to start speaking louder and not just saying, well, we, are, we like peace, we like this and that. It doesn't work. And this is why really I wanted today we talk about this subject. They're, they're just talking too much peace, peace, peace. Anyway, so... Well, well, let me say a couple of things. Well, one thing we should say right away, and then we'll go into the other uh, aspects of the analysis, is that we are very proud, we're very lucky to have a good professional military, well-armed and dedicated, committed to, to the homeland, who are fighting so well against much larger Azeri military and uh, more uh, armed uh, Azeri military. So with what we have, we're doing the best we can with it. And, and we, we, we are, we, we won this battle and God willing, we'll win many other battles. So we're, we're lucky that as opposed to being a little naive in politics, but when it comes to military and fighting, Armenian military is, is on the top of the line and they're winning against a superior, uh, uh, better armed uh, military in Azerbaijan. So we should all be proud of that and we should not in any way give the impression that we're uh, criticizing. Now we're talking about this political things, yes. Yeah, yeah. and when it comes to politics, that's, that's a different issue. And unfortunately, as I always say, and some Armenians don't like it, but we have to be very honest with ourselves. Armenians throughout their entire thousands of years of history They've all, we're a wonderful nation. We have so many major accomplishments in architecture, literature, music, art, uh, civilization, everything, except one thing. That's diplomacy or politics. Yeah. We're just very backward in diplomacy and politics. That's why we're in the shape we are. We've never been good. And throughout our history, I can count on one hand's fingers the number of really brilliant Armenian diplomats who led Armenia. Uh, we have some diplomats outside of Armenia, but unfortunately, they're not really working. Like Lavrov is uh, half Armenian and is the foreign minister of Russia, very accomplished diplomat. He's really, we he is? Gen in the United States, who was deputy assistant secretary of state. And, uh, you know, we had it in France and some other countries. But, but in Armenia itself, very rarely in thousands of years we had good diplomats. And that makes a difference because when it comes to a battle, 
not only you have to win the the, the fighting, which we did in uh, Artsakh or Nagorno Karabakh, you also have to win in the political field. As they say, you win the war, but don't lose the peace. Yes. You also have to be clever enough to win the peace. So we won the war, and we're negotiating for uh, 30 years almost on uh, the terms of uh, concessions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you know, it, it, it's not very common that the winning side uh, loses uh, the negotiation or the ceasefire or the peace. We, we won the war. We we don't want anything from Azerbaijan anymore. Azerbaijan cannot give us anything and does not want to give acknowledge independence for Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh. The we have what we want, and to hell with the Azeris. And uh, we also are making a major mistake in our negotiations. Again, this is not a Pashinyan issue. This is going on for 30 years. Yeah. And, and every leader has made the same mistake. We're negotiating, but Azeris keep shooting at the border yeah. on a daily basis. I'm not even counting the major incursions into the Nagorno-Karabakh border or uh, Armenia's border. I'm talking about daily shooting, sharpshooters shooting and killing. Yeah, yeah. Every, every other one, day you have soldiers killed. One, two Armenian soldiers that die, poor young Armenians die every day, and then we shoot back at them. What Armenian leaders, and I've said this to the previous leaders, that what Armenians should say to the whole world and to the Azeris, we c cannot accept to sit down at the negotiating table while shooting at each other. Yeah. Either we're going to fight or we are negotiate. You decide which one you want. If you want to fight, let's fight, like we did last week. If, one, if you want to negotiate, put your gun away, sit down, and let's negotiate. But but it's not acceptable. So what the, we, we've never made this announcement. And, and our, again, Armenians think that if we stop the negotiations, the world will be mad at us. The world will not be mad. We're not saying we're against negotiation. We're saying we are for negotiation, but peaceful negotiation. So the who's the guilty party here? It's Azerbaijan, who wants to shoot and yeah. talk at the same time. So what we have to say is we will no longer negotiate. We will suspend the negotiation for a few months until you stop the shooting. And if you continue shooting, we will prolong, we'll extend the suspension of negotiation another three months six months a year and of course when no negotiations take place that is not for the uh, uh, against armia's interest that's that's against azerbaijan interest not to negotiate because only by negotiation they hope to get something from armenia because uh, otherwise what's the point of negotiating we already have what uh, yeah. Yeah. We, we don't want anything from them and uh, so Azeris' only hope is by negotiating, because as we just saw last week, they're not strong enough to uh, impose uh, their will on us by force. So if they can impose, they have to sit down. But if, if we're going to ne continue negotiating with them, meet with them, foreign minister level, president level, prime minister level, and they're going to keep shooting, we're really uh, putting ourselves in, in a negative position. In, yeah. in, in a weak position. Totally we agree. Very strongly, we will not negotiate unless you stop shooting. And let the Azeris worry about that. And after three months, six months, a year pass where there are no negotiations, which means Azeris have zero chance of getting anything from negotiation because there's none, then the Minsk group, major powers, will go to Aliyev and say, Mr. Aliyev, what are you doing? Why are you keep shooting at the border? Because Armenia said they're not going to negotiate until you stop shooting. And uh, put the pressure on Aliyev to behave and stop shooting and start talking. But this is something that Armenian leaders, again, they, they try to be a nice guy. They go, oh, we don't want to stop. We don't want to be the ones to stop negotiation. Yeah. But you're not stopping it. Azerbaijan is stopping it by shooting. Yeah. So there are this clever approaches in, in dealing with Azerbaijan, in dealing with Turkey. Now, of course, Armenia is not a superpower. 
So we can't overdo, overplay our hand and act like we're a superpower and start threatening people here, there, that that can backfire. All I'm saying is a very simple concept. If, if your power is, let's say, 10, you try to use your power to the maximum 10 level. If you have the power of 10, don't act like you have a power of one and undersell yourself. Yeah. If you're 10, act like 10. If you're 100, act like 100. If you're 10, don't, like, don't act like 100 because then they will expose you and you will lose. But if you're 10, in other words, make a maximum use of your abilities, of your power. And th th that's when you, you, you get ahead. But if you're 10 and you con constantly act like one, then you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, well, the third of the year, they haven't got anything. They're negotiating. Like, as you said, the Armenians are really fighters and uh, they're very patriotic. Uh, but yet, the politically, it's screw up. They're constantly fighting each other. And uh, it's just like, it's just, this is why when I was talking about this military base, I didn't want to do it in Armenia because the politics and they're screwed up. And uh, there is nobody with, I mean, they fight even in the parliament. How stupid they are. That's Turks do that, not Armenians, you know. And uh, so uh, politically, I give Armenians zero. They just don't know how to do politics. Diplomatically, they're zero. Uh, they have no diplomatic things. Like, you know, when there is, uh, when you're uh, Pashinian, you are in Russia, in Moscow, you're standing beside Putin, right? That's where you have the podium there. You could threat in there to Azerbaijan. There where you could say, if you attack us, you're going to lose more land. So those are the points you take advantage of it. Not bad, you know, just sitting in your little office. You know, take advantage of the moment and send a message to Azeris that we, we mean what we say, you know. And then also, when they do this, you know, in the border stuff, they have to hit some, uh, some target, economic target that hurt Azerbaijan that you said, uh, like, uh, what is their, uh, I'm sure in Armenia, I don't want to change subject, Armenians, they have some protection for the nuclear power plant. I mean, it's not just sitting in there. They're not that stupid. They will let Azerbaijan come and bomb. But Armenian, Baku is the furthest point. Baku cannot control most of the area where it's close to Armenia. And so they could do lots of damage. But they have to do it, you know, and plan when there is this attack on a border like this, they will attack it, you know. But I don't know if they could do that. Well, yeah, thank God for, for our military, because that's what's keeping us yeah. uh, alive and uh, strong. And we should keep uh, supporting our, our uh, uh, heroes. So, because they're the ones who are sacrificing their life on the border. It's heartbreaking. Keeping us safe. Uh, otherwise, we'll be in big, big trouble if we didn't have a strong military. Yes. And, uh, and then when I, when I see that, I mean, that young guy, I mean, you saw, I put it on the, on the Facebook. You look at that, 19-year-old. I mean, imagine how their parents feel. Like, if we feel so horrible, how their parents feel. I mean... But that was just one. There was like four other ones and injured, you know. But Armenia should just not do tit for tat. When Azerbaijan do things like that, they have to go big. And they have to plan. They are in the military. They are in the region. In fact, there is, a, uh, there is a, I was just reading this. There is an area called Ginjai Gaz Gazakh. Ginjai, yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's good. To, uh, that's close to their pipeline and stuff like that. They could target places like that. So Azerbaijan knows every time you kill Armenian soldiers, you're going to pay a price. You know. So what do you think? Well, you know, I'm, I'm even suggesting something much more, uh, much softer and much more reasonable than attacking the pipeline or the rail lines or the reservoir. All I'm saying is if the Azeris say we're going to attack the nuclear power plant in Armenia. Armenian officials should not immediately say, oh, no, we don't do things like that. 
we uh, we don't attack civilians. Don't say anything. Let them guess what you could be doing <laughs> or you could not be doing. Let them guess, but don't come out and say, we're not going to do it. Don't say, it. maybe we will not do it, but don't say it. Let them keep guessing. Yeah. Be unpredictable, because if you're unpredictable, that's you're very dangerous to the enemy. They don't know what you may do. They may think that you, you have missiles that reach Baku, missiles that will destroy the reservoir and bury half of Azerbaijan underwater, uh, destroy uh, the pipeline, the gas line, the rail, rail line. The, they, let them guess that. We don't have to threaten uh, if they don't want to threaten. No, I'm not saying threat. I'm not saying threaten, but you take an action. When things like this happen, and then next time they will know if they do this stuff, there will be the reserve. There will be uh, the other places. Uh, but uh, Armenian is just, uh, I don't know. Their politics sucks, you know. I agree. The, 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 the more aggressive, the more you show your teeth to the enemy, the more they're careful in tangling with you. The, the, the more they see that you're soft, and that's what Ali have thought this time. They thought that, well, Pashinyan just came to power, and he's talking about uh, making the population of both countries more peaceful. Uh, he's an easy target. Let's go and attack and get some territory. Well, thank God for the military. They defended the land. They even took some land from Azerbaijan on the border. Uh, that's what I read. And uh, so... The, the other thing that uh, we, we should uh, discuss is this uh, military alliance treaty with, with, with Russia. When, when the attack happened, started last week, Armenia contacted the CSTO office in Moscow and asked for a meeting of the various countries that, that are uh, former Soviet republics that are members of CSTO. Azerbaijan is not a member there. So Armenia asked for a meeting. Uh, the answer came back saying, well, let's not have a meeting right now. Let's postpone it. Huh. And I know I know what's going on behind the scene. I can guess. My guess is that Putin told the CSTO Secretary General, the, no, let's, let's not uh, have a meeting where uh, Armenia is going to demand that we send troops and uh, defend Armenia. And... Uh, let, let me intervene and try to get a ceasefire and have both sides calm down without going into this military mm -hmm. treaty business. And, and so, so the CSTO postponed the, the meeting. Of course, Armenia is now saying, and I think that they, because they want to look good, they said, oh, we didn't ask for CS, CSTO assistance, military assistance, because we can handle this ourselves. Well, I mean, that, that's a good thing to say. It sounds good. But the Azeris learn a valuable lesson that when they attack Armenia, Armenia is going to be alone. The CSTO partners, allies, will not come to its defense. So this will encourage them to attack again. Yes. But if, but if we get CSTO to come in and just not even attack Azerbaijan, just to be in Armenia, immediately... Uh, Azerbaijan will stop because they're not going to take on several countries' military power. So they will not be encouraged to attack again. But if they see that CSTO is, is pulling aside, standing aside, that will encourage them to attack again. So but, it's not just solving a problem now, but you need to think of solving a problem in the future. But those, those are, most of them are uh, Turks, you know, like... Uh, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Uzbekistan. Yeah. So they're not going to go fight Azerbaijanis. I mean, uh, maybe Belarus, but I doubt it. So, Yeah, they're, they're, it's, well, that, that's one of the reasons why the CSTO did not have a meeting, so that the Muslim uh, yeah. Central Asian countries who are in CSTO, they're not put in a position where they have to say, no, we're not going to fulfill the obligation of, of the treaty. We're not going to send troops, nor they can send troops because they have good relations with their fellow Muslim yeah, Azerbaijan. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's, it's, it's a very uh, sensitive subject, touchy subject. Yeah. But but I'm, I'm just saying that if you're in a treaty and you don't use the treaty, then that will encourage Azerbaijan to attack again. Yeah, yeah Ar Armenian have to learn to talk tough 
And then when something like this happened, they have to hit the economic target. And that's how you do it. But uh, you just sit in there and talk as peace, peace, peace. Peace will never happen, you know. And so that's yeah. my opinion. Yeah, but like, like uh, the last few months, there's been a lot of conversation in Washington by the ANC and Armenian lobbyists talking to the State Department uh, because the State Department decided to uh, shift, to, I think, to, I think about $20 million or something of U.S. foreign aid to Armenia to shift from doing projects in Armenia into a peacemaking uh, plans in order to prepare the Armenians for peace. And, you know, we don't need to prepare the Armenians for peace. Armenians want peace. If, if, if the Azeris are the ones that don't yeah, want peace. Exactly. They should prepare Azerbaijan, not only the people of Azerbaijan, uh, need to be prepared for peace. As we saw in Baku, the protests where thousands of uh, Azeris gathered and they uh, attacked their own parliament to trying to force Aliyev to uh, have a bigger military attack on Armenia. But we, we need to teach peace to the uh, people of Azerbaijan, but also we need, more importantly, we need to teach peace to the leaders of Azerbaijan because they don't believe in peace. For 30 years now, Every other day, Aliyev and uh, uh, his son Aliyev and the father Aliyev constantly threatening not only nagorno karabakh Artsakh, they're also threatening Armenia itself. And, yeah. and then we saw they attacked Tabush in Armenia. Uh, yeah, but just saying to... that Yerevan was, belongs to Azerbaijan and yeah. Zankezu, Goris belongs, so it's not just from Karabakh. So the, 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 more we, uh, the more, the faster we shut them up, and we show our teeth to them, the more we protect ourselves. As they say, a good defense is a, a good offense. So if, if you're aggressive, then the enemy will be much more careful in tangling with you. You know, Aliyev, he knows if he goes to war, it will be his end. The people will revolt against him. He knows that. And that's why he tried to do these little things and talk tough. And But, you know, like even Pashinyan, could start, uh, say, you know, bring some uh, Azerbaijani opposition in Armenia or someplace, you know, train them, put some uh, radio broadcasting on, asking the Azeris to revolt and tell them how he did stuff. He could do lots of even politically, political stuff, you know, ask uh, Azeris to revolt against him. You could do this stuff. But it seems to me they just so embroil in Armenia among themselves they don't talk about this stuff, you know. I guess we need to go from outside, tell them what to do, but we don't want to get involved in their affair, you know. Well, unfortunately, uh, and it's something we mistake we make all the time, Armenians are busy fighting each other. Yeah. And uh, we have sides, we have parties, we, we have opposition, we have uh, leaders. They, you know, we, we don't seem to understand. We're a handful of people in the world and this handful, if you divide them, split them, there'll be nothing left. The handful, the fingers have to join and become a fist. Yeah. That's how you become a power. Un unless you become a power, uh, you, 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 uh, you disappear. Uh, nobody cares about you. Nobody's going to say, oh, poor Armenian people, they were killed, genocide. They're the first Christian nation yeah. in 31 yeah. AD. Yeah. Nobody cares about these things. Mm -hmm. It just shows how much power you have. Now there, look, what, what you, we have, we're fighting each other. Look at Erdogan. He put this, poke his finger in the eyes. All Christian people says, I'm changing it to Islam uh, a church from uh, Christian. It was like supposed to be museum uh, to mosque. What did any Christian country said anything? Nothing. Well, well we're still waiting for Trump uh, to say a word. Uh, in fact, Trump... It. Trump was uh, uh, this couple of days on the phone helping uh, Erdogan. He's talking to Saudis and talking to Emirates, uh, saying to cool down this Libyan stuff. He is working for, for Erdogan now. He's trying to help him because they see this Egyptian now are, are hot. Uh, they want to go kick Turkey out. So he will not do that. This is a fake Christian, uh, 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 Trump. Yeah, well... The, uh, unfortunately, neither Trump nor Putin have said a word about Hagia Sophia. No. If 
you know, 1500 year old, uh, one of the most prominent church structures in the world yes. to be converted to Muslim. Every leader verbally has condemned it, but no one has spoken about any sanctions on Turkey for doing this. Yeah. Everybody is against it, but they're all hot air. There's no substance behind it. Yeah, it's just amazing. He, he got away with this guy. He corrupt every U.S. president. You know, he's just amazing. I mean, I give him a credit. Every U.S. president he corrupt. And no one more than, well, at least this one, he has investment in Istanbul. He has a Trump Tower and other businesses in there. So, of course, he's not going to go uh, say something uh, hurt the other one. So. But other well, president, the same thing, you know. Yeah, well, that's, that's because I go back to what we discussed earlier. Because even though we make fun of Turks, we call them criminal, ignorant, backwards. But when it comes to diplomacy, Armenians are the ones that are really backwards and weak. Turks, uh, they ran a huge empire all over the world for 600 years, where we just had independence for two years, 1918-20, and then we lost that to the, to the Soviets, and now we're independent again. So we don't really have experience in international diplomacy. We don't have good international diplomats. And we, uh, instead of laughing at Turks, we should watch how Turkey behaves, how Israel behaves, how they protect their interests, how many other countries defend their own interests, and how we can become stronger, how we can join hands and not fight each other. Uh, you know, nobody should say, I'm a better Armenian than you are. We're all Armenians. We're all equally patriotic. We're all good Armenians. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just join and and uh, the family should come together. When there's a fighting in the family, then there's no family anymore. Family d disappears. So we should, we should get along. Uh, right now, even in the middle of this uh, fighting, I see some people are attacking each other on Facebook. They, they have don't, no sense that this is no time to attack each other. You know, uh, we, we, we can give opinion, polite opinion. We, we can try to help. But don't attack each other. Don't treat a fellow Armenian as your enemy. Well, I, I have a good explanation for the uh, unreasonable Armenian behavior. What happens is this. Our enemy is Turkey and Azerbaijan. So an Armenian living in Glendale or in Moscow or someplace else, they, because we're not, we're not good diplomats, they cannot think of anything to do to further Armenian interests forward. There's, there's nothing they can do against Turkey to damage Turkey's interest. We've been fighting for years about telling our people, don't buy Turkish products. And they still buy them. Yeah. Armenian shops in Glendale still import Turkish products. So we, we, we cannot do even the simplest thing. Forget about uh, uh, doing something major. Even minor things we cannot do. But it's very easy to go on Facebook and just attack Wally or attack so-and-so, another fellow Armenian. That's easy. That doesn't take any brain. It doesn't take any resources. So we always go, I always give a funny example. When a worker at the office gets uh, criticized by his boss and his boss gives him a hard time all day long, eight hours a day in the office. So the office worker he comes home very frustrated because he cannot say anything back to his boss. He doesn't want to lose his job. Right. He, comes home, he comes home and starts kicking the cat or the dog. Yeah. Well, when you can't attack your enemy, then you attack whatever, some yeah. other target that's convenient, that's easy to attack. So, so we all attack each other. We offend each other, we insult each other. Uh, in Armenia, the, they call them blacks and whites and... You know, we should all learn how to get along. We don't have to agree on everything. We can disagree. I'm sure there are a lot of things that you and I would disagree on if we start looking for things. But why look for disagreeing things? Look for things that we all agree on. And little by little, we start working together on the things that we agree and just put aside our disagreements. Because our nation needs our help.
they don't need our help five, 50, 100 years from now. If the way we're going, we're, we may be in trouble in the future, but the time to help Armenia is now. Because now yeah. is what Armenia is surrounded by enemies as a powerful Turkey and Azerbaijan. And this is the time to unite. So th this has to really, un most Armenians need to understand this and stop fighting each other. Yes, for little stupid things. It's nothing to do with Armenian. I wish uh, all these things they're doing, it, it was Armenian, yeah. But you know, like people just throw uh, something they don't like uh, in host country, they live here, okay, you like Republican, Democrats, fine. That's different. Do not mix it with Armenians. You know, that's a totally different story. But then, no, no, it's, uh, yeah, if you like Trump, then I'm with you. You're doing good Armenian. But if you don't like it, then I'm not. Like, what has to do with this? Well, you can be a Republican, you can be a Democrat, you yeah. can be an environmentalist, you can be anything. But there's no reason to attack someone else, Armenian or non-Armenian. There's no reason to attack them. People believe in different things. They have different value systems. They have different principles. So let's all live together. And like Rodney King said during the riots, can't we all get along? Well, that should be a slogan that should be written everywhere uh, around yeah. Armenian community. Can we all get along? Yeah. All right. So we've been like almost an hour now. Times go so fast, you know, and so interesting. Um, I thank you very much, and uh, we'll we'll maybe uh, make something specific uh, on especially the your project. I I want to know what happened to that, but I don't want to do it in here. So I'm just yeah. gonna end this, and then uh, but don't go away. Just stay there for a minute. All right. Thank well, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for watching, and this is very interesting. We're, we're going to have some more of this uh, now that uh, our system is working good, and we had lots of problems before with Internet, stuff like that. Thank you, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.